right, so here we are. We're gonna head down to 18 Mile Creek, which is part of the uh, Lake Erie watershed, meaning that any of the water that ends up into 18 Mile Creek finally ends up into Lake Erie and then eventually down into the uh, Atlantic Ocean. So we're gonna go down there, we're gonna take a little field trip, and we are going to do some stream measurements. We've been talking about streams in our presentations. Uh, you guys have been doing a lot of great work with that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some, some lab data. Uh, we're gonna try to figure out where it really is the fastest part of the stream. Uh, we're gonna look at some uh, erosion and deposition and, uh, and try to make some sense of it. And let's see how it goes. So field trip time, you guys ready? All right, so here we're zooming into using Google Earth down to 18 Mile Creek it's at the corner of uh, Sisson Highway, Route 75 and Church Street. And that's the creek right there, 18 Mile, that we're going to be working in. Uh, here it is without the satellite on, and we're gonna work on that outside bend where the cursor is right there. And that's the bridge you're gonna see in the video from time to time. It's gonna look straight a little bit, but uh, you can see that it's clearly a meander and we're going to work on the outside bend, the inside and the center of the stream. I'm just going to zoom out here so you can see um, how this creek flows into Lake Erie. So it gets a little small here but it meanders through these other towns, through, through Eden uh, and Hamburg and then it connects right there with the other branch of 18 Mile Creek to, so it's a tributary and making its way all the way down to the mouth there. You can even see uh, Lake Erie. And we'll zoom out a little bit more and you can start to see other areas you might recognize. Uh, there's Chictawaga and here's even uh, Lake Ontario. Here we are down in, in 18 Mile Creek, and what we're going to do first is we're going to we're going to test to see how fast the stream is going. We're going to do that by marking off 10 meters across the shore. I'll do it on the outside there, and then we're going to throw a tennis ball and see how fast it's going on the outside of the stream, in the middle of the stream, and then on the inside of the stream. This is considered the outside bank over there. It looks like it's going straight, but in the grand scheme of things, it's it's actually a curve, okay? Give me a few seconds, I'll set up the stuff, and then we'll take some measurements. There's a data table, and on the data table, there's three marks. The outside of the stream, the middle of the stream, and the inside of the stream. We're gonna start with the outside of the stream. So get a timer ready, and I'm gonna throw the tennis ball up towards the little green tag up there. It's set 10 meters apart from each other. On my go, you'll start your timer, and then on my stop, you'll st stop your timer, enter that data, and then we'll uh, calculate the speed after that. So on my go, we'll start with the outside of the stream. And go. and stop all right good so now we're going to start now we're going to do one with the middle of the stream so once again on my go hit start on your timer so reset your timer right now please And go.
and stop. Last one, we're gonna go with the inside of the current. I'm just gonna drop it this time. Um, and when I drop in the water, you can hit start uh, with your timer. So get your timers ready. And as soon as it hits the water, go ahead and start your timer. So as you can see, it's gonna take a while. It's not moving at all, really. Will it get down there? Eventually. Uh, it's not moving very much though. So the question is, I want you to start to think about, this is the inside of the stream. So what does that tell you about the amount of sediment that's either being deposited or eroded on the outside, the center, and the inside of the stream? Where do you think the most amount of sediments are going to be deposited? This is going to take a long time. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to take some data. Uh, we're going to figure out every meter. We're going to take a measurement to see how the stream channel is, and we'll graph this stuff. So um, get ready, pause where you need to. But for the first meter, we are 60 centimeters. Second one, we're 55. For the third one, we're 55. For the fourth one, we're 61. For the fifth meter, we're 70 centimeters. Seventh one, and I can start to feel the pressure on my thighs here. We're 82 centimeters. For the eighth one, 82 again. For the ninth one, 70. And the 11th meter were 30 centimeters. So we're going to head downstream just a little bit here. I uh, just want to check out some of these, these boulders on the inside. Let's talk about a couple things here though. So now we've changed the dynamics of the stream a little bit where the outside is, is moving really fast out there and it's kind of channeled all the water into uh, a narrower area. So if I look back upstream, it's a really wide stream and then it narrows it into one spot so it's moving really fast there probably a, a lot more erosion going on but what we're focusing on are these uh bigger boulders on the inside like it would take a lot of movement or a lot of water to force to get these ones moving uh, and it leaves them all here but the overlying bedrock in this area is shale it's all sedimentary rock and we're gonna come back and we'll we'll take a good look at that over here. So everything around here is either shale or limestone, all these sedimentary rocks. However, as I'm walking around through here, how do you explain that? 
this rock shows clear foliation, which is an indication that it's a metamorphic rock. How did it get here? This water didn't bring it here, and there's not much metamorphic rock for here for a long time. Let's see what else we can find around here for a long distance, I should say. Uh, oh, here's another one. Here's another one. Clear foliation on there. Looks great. It's not like the regular rocks. These are the regular rocks around here. This is shale. It breaks really easily. Oh, look at this. Looks a lot like granite to me. This whole area is littered with things like this. Uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. So where do these rocks come from if they're not the same as our underlying rock? Oh, here's a good one. Look at this. This could be from around here. All of these are fossils, uh, probably crinoids, like stems, like plant stems. Pretty cool. Might have to take this one back to the classroom. Oh, that's fabulous. Look at that. Alright, oh, right next to this nice piece of nice. Look at that nice rock. Oh my god, this is great. Okay. Maybe just one rock today I'll take. Yeah, I get pretty excited around the rocks here, but hey. Pretty cool stuff. So it got really cold here last night, so there's a fair amount of ice on the walls and stuff, but what I really want to talk about is the, the rock type. Check this out. So this rock type, first thing, gives you a strong indication that it's a sedimentary rock is that it's in these nice horizontal layers, right? At one point, this area had to have been covered with water. And I don't mean just this little stream, but I mean like a lake of water or a small ocean or something. And all of this is evidence of the past. So the rocks tell you a lot about what this area may have been like hundreds of thousands, millions of years ago. Pretty cool stuff. So sometimes along the, the river beds after a big rain or something, you uh, get some good finds. Like brand new Apple computers. Look at that. Doesn't look too bad. Probably clean this thing up and refurbish it, sell it on eBay. But in all actuality, we will pick up this type of stuff. And uh, you should always leave wherever you go out in the wilderness leave it better than it was when you got here. So leave no trace behind, pick up some garbage. I know it's not yours, but pick it up and make, uh, make the area for the next person comes here a little bit nicer. So, uh, after about 10 minutes of cleaning up after we're done shooting this video, uh, you can see how much garbage is around here. So once again, uh, do your part when you're out a great way to get out social distance ourselves a little bit and um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this lesson we'll try to do some more of these over the next couple weeks and we're gonna start talking about glaciers soon a little bit more mass wasting I got a good spot near my house that has some of that so soon we'll talk to you guys soon wish I could have you guys all here for a real field trip but is the best we can do right now so uh thank you and uh good luck on those questions let me know if you got any questions about them thank you